Hi, folks. Welcome back to Money and Politics. It's February the 9th. And uh, first of all, I wanted to um, <clears throat> thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter. I put something out today on Twitter. Kind of an interesting article and some people. Uh, and if you want to write me and some have, there's that. I wanted to also say I apologize for not getting back here as much as I would like. Of late, I've been busy, so I haven't been purposely avoiding talking to you. Uh, it's just I had to go. Uh, I was just recently in Chicago on business, <clears throat> and then that gets other things backed up. So here we are. And I'm coming to you today with still about an hour left in the trading day. And again, it's Wednesday, February 9th. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you about Humble today. I will say, if you, as a reminder, <clears throat> before I get into Humble, tomorrow we're going to have uh, InMode uh, is going to be releasing its full year earnings and for fourth quarter and full year for 2021 INMD. So that's something that uh, you want to be paying attention to. Again, I'm very I'm looking for revenues of about three hundred and fifty seven million dollars or so. Uh, and maybe about one hundred and twenty, one hundred and twenty five million on uh, earnings. So <clears throat> that's what we will uh, be looking for on that. Now, let's talk about humble. And as I am here today at the moment, and it's just about two o'clock Eastern or Central. Here is uh, what's going on right now with uh, Humble, and it is, as you can see, just below 17 cents on heavy volume today. We are, with an hour left to go, at 18 million shares traded, where the 10-day average is about 10 million. Now, there's been, understandably, a lot of grumbling about Humble. And as I taped this on February 9, one year ago on February 8th was the high watermark for Humble when it momentarily hit $7. But it had been building up since December and people had high hopes. And based upon the growth and the enthusiasm, well, we had very high hopes for what 2020 would hold for Humble or 2021, I should say, would hold for Humble and that if we were in February at $7, it was reasonable to think that maybe by the end of the year, it might be as high as $10. I mean, just to put this in context. Now, we are in February of 2022, and we are at 17 cents. So no one expects you to be happy with the one-year chart on Humble that has taken us down to this period. So now the question is, what now? <clears throat> I had a friend call me up today who doesn't invest. I had, frankly had almost forgotten that I had told her to put some money into Humble. And we've known each other for a long time, and so I, I called her back, and I wanted to share just the same message I gave her. I'm going to share it with you. And basically the idea is at 16, or let's call it 17 cents, if you were to sell now, uh, you've already, you're already are down, right? So you're not going to lose everything. And I'm not trying to talk in anything here, folks. I'm just trying to say, let's rationally go over where we are at this point in time. So if you, if the only way you're going to lose everything is if Humble goes bankrupt. Because if you have... 10,000 shares or 50,000 or 100,000, while the value of those shares are down a lot, I'm sure, probably everyone that holds humble, but maybe 1% are down. But if you sell at this point, what are you saving? It's almost like too late to jump ship unless you think it's going to go to zero. And you say, well, maybe it's going to go to five cents. All right, well, let's say it did. If you have 100,000 shares, you still have 100,000 shares. And then if it were to come back, you still have your 100,000 shares. Unless you're jumping in and out, 
the shares you bought are the shares you still have. You're, you're buying the future value of a company. No one has a crystal ball, and if we did, none of us would have bought back in 2021. We'd be buying now. So let's review. Today's February 9. By the, I'm expecting by the end of the month, we will have the fourth quarter earnings on Humble. And one of the things I want to remind you of is where we are. This is an article from June 4. June 4, Humble completes the uh, Tickery acquisition. And it goes into this. And you can see the dateline there, June 4th. 2021. Let me bring up what Brian Foote told us. We're, we're about to get the fourth quarter earnings. Let's look at what we got in the third quarter earnings. And here says Humble quarterly report third quarter of 2021. He had this uh, <clears throat> in early November, I believe this is when this came out. Now it says one, two, three, fourth one down, fourth bullet point. Tickery, since June the 3rd, recognized revenues of approximately 489000 and that's Humble's earnings, from $6.8 million in ticket sales, which exceeded management's estimates coming off the surge in COVID from the Delta variant. We anticipate further increases as a result of a full slate of events in the fourth quarter of 21 and the first quarter of 2022. Okay. As I have said before, as Brian has foot has said before, and again, by the way, Brian, I'm, I'm not paid by humble folks. I'm just covering I'm your as Bill O'Reilly used to say, your humble servant. I'm just here reporting on it like I would report other stories from what sources I have. I have had periodically, actually, I've had, I've had the opportunity to talk to Brian um, during the Nashville event back in September. That's the only time I ever laid eyes on the man and the only time he and I have ever talked. So when I quote directly what Brian told me, it's from Nashville. That said, Brian told all of us that the global reach, the global marketplace, I should say, for ticket sales is $100 billion a year. Now, 1% of $100 billion would be a billion. So if Humble got a half of 1% of the global ticket marketplace, that would be revenues of $500 million. Now, that would not all be profit to Humble, but that's, that would be the ticket sales. As again, we see they had ticket sales for the third quarter of 6.8 million and change. 6.8 million of which $489,000 went to Humble. So how much could Humble do in the future? How much could it do this year? I don't know. Let's say, could it go from 6.8 million, which was one quarter? Let's take, let's call that $7 million to make math a little simple. If they did 7 million in ticket sales a quarter, times four, that's 28 million. If we take the 489,000 by four, you're at 2 million. And that we're not going to have stagnant ticket sales. As COVID goes away, we're going to have more ticket sales. So what I'm saying is, number one, I am extrapolating from that. You can accept or reject my extrapolation. That the ticket sales alone for Humble's uh, business, and we have a, a number of lines, which I'll go into, the ticket sales alone would could be easily be bringing in, and I think this year, I am extrapolating here, folks. Don't say I promised you this. Uh, but I think that we, if we get the COVID to go away, 
I think I think the ticket sales um, could be not 28 million, but they could go 40 or 50 million dollars, and that would just be this year. What could it do the following year? I mean, again, Brian was just down in Santiago, Chile. He didn't. Maybe we'll hear more about that. But anyway, that's one business line. You get the, the next line here, and again, this is from the third quarter, this graphic I have. Monster Creative recognized approximately 678000 in revenue from their creative team. We kind of forget that while Monster Creative came in and will be creating NFTs, and I'll be interested to hear what that is in the fourth quarter, but Monster Creative is still out there bringing in money from Hollywood Studios. So... We have ticket sales. We have Doug and his team on from Monster Creative, which is part of Humble, creating the money. And there they go. There's 678000 So number one, when we're here and looking at uh, Humble at $0.16 cents or so, um, that is not going to be the future of this stock. Because this company, a year ago, when it was up to right at, that says $5, but, you know, briefly it was at $7, that was too high. We were, as they say, out over your skis, maybe appropriate while the Winter Olympics is going on. But we, we had too much enthusiasm for Humble. Now, I would say we have too much depression, too much negativity about Humble because you've had all the FUD out there and we've had a year of declining stock price. Now, I can look at other things, folks, uh, that are out there and how they have declined in price as well. I mean, back in March of uh, 2020, or April, I should say, of 2020, the price of a barrel of oil was down to $18 a barrel. Today, the price of oil is at um, about $89, $90 a barrel. So let's not forget that the marketplace prices swing up and down. $89, I'm going to call it $90, just under $90 crude right now. So marketplace go up and down. This is too depressed, and it doesn't reflect the growth potential of Humble. Let's take a look. And again, this is from what Brian Foote had uh, shared with us earlier. We have Humble Pay, buy crypto, earn interest, peer-to-peer -peer payments. We have Humble Marketplace, NFTs, tickets, which I've been talking about, but also real estate. For those who say you can't get any, you, and I, I posted recently that we have any number of ways to generate substantial income for Humble. The Humble does. Have you heard anything about real estate? Have you focused on real estate? Can you tell me what the earnings are going to be on real estate going forward? We have tokenization coming, and that is going to be revolutionary. The ability to buy into shares of a company or other assets in a tokenized way instead of having to go out and buy the whole thing. I don't want to go off on, on that and, and do a lot of speculation. My point is that the, the negative, this, the, the FUD, the people out there who are saying that Brian is a crook and all the rest of it, have not done any real legitimate analysis. Now, you could say and I think that's also somewhat suspect. You could say, well, there, Terry, there's just too many shares out there. And I would say, but folks, that's why on one hand they did the reverse split to go from 4 billion shares to 1 billion shares. And everyone done, you know, how many, well, if they hadn't done the reverse split, we'd be okay. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't say the reverse split with got rid of shares was bad, and yet then say we've got too many shares now. I mean... This is where so many of the people who are negative about Humble are nonsensical. And then we have Humble Financial, um, and we have the index trading and the rest. Look, folks, I would say this. Not everything is going to be good in the future with Humble, and no company ever does everything right. There are other people. 
as we have seen with Apple. Apple, with their app, has continued to upgrade. Upgrades to applications are always there. There are things that I think Humble, I think, would have done differently, or I wish they would have been quicker to the marketplace. Um, but I do think that Brian Foote has done, and his team have done an amazing job laying the foundation for growth, which they have done. Now, let me say something that maybe I should have said right off the bat. When we get the fourth quarter earnings, let me do this. When we get the fourth quarter earnings, that'll come out around the end of February. So we won't have to wait that long. That will be the first full quarter to have not only the ticket sales, but we're going to have uh, the NFTs, which were added right before the end of the third quarter. And the tickets on the application came out right before. So we're going to have in the fourth quarter, the first, what I would say, full quarter in the history of Humble, where we had business lines open and can look at their revenues generated. So that's going to be a dot on the graph, the first dot. Now you can't draw a line with one dot. You need two, draw, two dots to draw a line on a graph. So then we're gonna to have to wait for the first quarter of 2022. And we will see what revenues did we have. And then we can compare apples to apples. We can compare the, earn, the revenues and the earnings but let's, at this stage of the game, I'm more focused on revenues. When we get probably near the end of May, which seems like a long time away, but it really isn't. When we get in May, the uh, revenues for the first quarter of 2022, which ends in March, we will be able to compare that quarter to the quarter, the fourth quarter of 2021. And the first quarter of 2022 then will be the second dot on the chart. And then we're either going to, you know, say the revenues went up, the revenues were flat, or the revenues went down. And then we can speak. If the revenues went down, then we can say, well, Brian, what's the deal? How come revenues are down? Why, uh, where did we fail? Where, uh, where did it not meet expectations? Um, I think his team is continuing to do a lot. In fact, very shortly here, I'm going to be posting, and by shortly, I don't know if it's today or tomorrow, or I've already shot an interview where another group, a small group of people are starting a business in conjunction with Humble. So they went to Humble and said, would you want to work with this? And it involves NFTs. I don't want to get out and and I did an interview with one of the founders of that company. And my point of bringing this up is there are so many different things that are in the works. Whether they are started by Humble uh, and are going to be developed, or whether they're going to be started by third parties working in conjunction with Humble and are going to be developed, no one out there who is putting out this negative claptrap knows what the future is going to be and how many times and different partners Humble is going to be able to do deals with. Now, is Humble going to stumble? Are they going to not execute perfectly? Yeah, they're not going to execute perfectly. But they don't have to execute perfectly, and no one does. And when they stumble, then you look and you do it better. As I said, you can't do something better until you've done it. You might make a, a dish, you cook a meal that you've never cooked before and try a new recipe. I did one the other day. It was kind of a Korean cucumber thing. And I made it and, you know, it was okay, but it, it wasn't what I expected. And so when I'm going to go back to make that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweak it. I'm going to put some flavors in there that really kind of like, I like something that smacks you in the tongue, that says this is flavorful, not muddied flavors. The analogy is that when you do something and Brian Foote and his team are going to be doing that, they're going to say, you know what, we tried this, it's not working, what do we do to make it better? Or we tried this and it worked, but what can we do to make it better? You always work to make things better, and folks... 
again, I'm not uh, Bill Gates, but I've run businesses, and that's the nature of the game. You're always saying, how can we market better? How can we do things better? Okay. I'm sorry that I, I don't, <laughs> you know, brevity is not my talent, and I'm, I see I'm already at 20 minutes here. But the larger point I would say to you is that we have too many unknowns to say that Humble is not going to succeed. 2021 was the first operating year for Humble. That laid the foundation. 2022, where we are now, is going to be where Humble is going to have to start to show the results that last year were mere promises, the promise of what's coming. Now we're going to have to be able to say, okay, what are you guys doing? And it doesn't help the company that we had COVID, and it doesn't help the company that the stock price has gone down so severely because the stock price is what any CEO wants to use as a currency to make acquisitions. He doesn't want to go and be using cash. He wants to be able to say, I'm going to buy you with maybe with some cash, but largely with stock price. So it does hurt the company's ability to add uh, new, new acquisitions when the share price is as low as it is. But the share price today is not necessarily the share price of tomorrow. And if we go back one month, what is this? Uh, January the 13th, and we were at, uh, looks like about 33 cents if I'm reading that right. So January 13th, which is not even a month ago, uh, the stock price was twice what the price is right now. So do you sell today? I would say, no, is what I would say. You got to do what you got to do, but don't be selling mere on mere negativity. And again, this is what separates the men from the boys, so to speak, when it comes to being investors. None of us knows what the future is. If we knew the future price of things, we would all be billionaires within about two months because we could double our money every day if we knew what the, the future held. We don't. I mean, that's rather obvious. But when I look at the stock price, just, just less than a month ago, it was at uh, twice what it is today. If we go back six months ago, we go back to September here, it was a um, six. So if you got 10,000 shares right now, just to make math simple, that's worth about $1,600, $1,700. We're just under $1,700 on 10,000 shares. But back in September, your 10,000 shares would have been worth a little over $10,000. So do you want to sell your 10,000 shares now for $1,700 when if we went back to where we were a mere, what, five months ago or so, you'd be almost five times the value? I would say, folks, if you've come this far, uh, then you might as well you might as well hang on to see what kind of revenues we're going to get. First of all, from the very first quarter that we ever had, where we get Humble coming in with a full quarter of revenue. And then I would say, hang on to see for that second dot on the graph to say, are we going to get an increase in the number of revenues that we got from the fourth quarter of 21 to the first quarter of 2022. What other things are coming? What is Brian going to be doing with the tokenization of real estate? What else are they going to be developing in marketing? What other deals can Doug and his team and what kind of revenues can they be generating from NFTs, which we don't know. I mean, again, we just we just had that come out. And is anyone saying that NFTs are a mature marketplace? Nobody would say that. 99% of the people on the planet don't even know what an NFT is. Okay? And at some point, we have to get the share price up, but then down the road, if Humble gets to where we join uh, the NASDAQ, then, as I've said before, you've got a whole another round of funding available from pension funds, mutual funds, and the rest. So, folks, 
if you've hung on for the year, then you've already kind of committed yourself because you're like the guy who was holding on to a rope tied to a hot air balloon. If you didn't let go after you got 20 feet off the ground, then it's too late to let go. You know, you, you, if you let go, then you're just killing yourself after about 20 feet. So now you gotta, I would say, argue to hang on. Um, this chart for the last year, would anyone say it's miraculous if it's reversed? No, it could easily be reversed over the coming year. And by the way, what have I said early on? You're buying a company, you're not buying a stock price. Uh, as we look, look at what Humble has continued to do. Blocks now available inside Humble Pay Mobile Wallet. And that was uh, 18 days ago or so. Humble uplifted to the OTC QB tier. Okay, that was what, 24 days ago or so. Monster Creative wins awards in the action adventure and documentary. Humble launches ACH integration within Humble Pay Wallet. Uh, Humble announces launch of Humble Pay mobile wallet with peer-to-peer -peer functionality. That was three months ago or so. Um, and so my point is that we have continued to have throughout the last year, things going, uh, upgrades, achievements, purchases of new companies. And again, folks, before I close out, remember that one year ago, we didn't even have our own ticker. We were still TSNP and then we were TSNPD. And it wasn't until March that we became HMBL. So this is still such a baby company. It's uh, just now getting out of the crib and starting to crawl. And what we are going to hopefully see in the very near future, when we get the earnings um, from the fourth quarter and then in May from the first quarter of this year, we'll finally get some hard evidence to say, how are we growing? I think there are going to be some areas where the company is growing in a very positive way. And I think there's going to be some areas where we are growing uh, a lot slower than we wanted to be growing. And then they're going to have to say, why is that? And then we're going to also need to do some, some um, marketing because a lot of people don't know. But I, I don't blame them for not doing marketing when uh, it was too early in the game to be doing the marketing. So before I close out, let me just get the last, where are we at the moment? We are at $16.75. We are up to almost 20 million shares with about another 40 minutes. So we're gonna go over 20 million shares traded, which is twice the normal. Um, and we are down less than, I mean, we're down less than a penny, uh, 0.006 down 0 0.006. Folks, as always, you need to do what you need to do. You are the one that manages your money. If you want to get out, then you can get out. I can only kind of put this into perspective and I want to get you some context, okay? Um, lastly, I'm just uh, out of my own curiosity, I want to check because tomorrow we get, as I say, on in mode INMD, uh, which Again, I have talked about many times. Let's take a quick look. Up 3%, uh, up 6%, up $3 a share. And again, this recently had come down quite a lot. The volume today, 1.9 million. It's kind of in line a little bit, a little bit better. If I go back six months, you can see we peaked out in... Uh, <clears throat> November, but again, that did a two for one split. So I think some people were getting on board because of that. And I thought at the time that in mode was getting ahead of itself because people were buying because of the two for one split coming up. Uh, but I think we are, we went down to uh, what, 40 something, $41 or so, I think was the Nadir and that was January 27. I was buying down in that region. I think it's still a buy. And again, this is one I think you wanna have for the long haul. We're finally gonna be able to upgrade these charts here where 2020 was uh, 206 million with 75 million in earnings. And again, I'm expecting about 360 million, 357, 
360 million on revenues with earnings uh, in the area of 120 to 125 million share uh, million dollars um, is my expectations. We'll see how I did. And that uh, basically is where we are today, folks. And again, I hope that uh, my attitude is, folks, when when the on the OTC especially, things are going to move against you, and um, it is what it is. You have to put up with that. Uh, but I still think that Humble is a company, irrespective of the downturn of its price, that has a multitude of potential. Am I saying it's a slam dunk winner? No. Am I saying it's without risk? No. It has risk. You might ultimately be disappointed. I might ultimately be disappointed. But I would say that it's a little early in the game to be saying you can't win. And I guess I'll close with this one last admonition. On my 50th birthday, a friend took me to uh, Wrigley Field, which I watched a game for the first time where my St. Louis Cardinals were playing the Cubs. And in the second inning, the Cubs scored seven runs, but the Cardinals won the game. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks, folks, as always. Sorry I went so long.